happen and it's human nature to want to help when someone's hurt but did it occur to you that our forklift operator let's call him Bob might actually be in danger if he aids his injured co-worker that's right there's a potential for harm here that's too small to be seen by the naked eye but it could change Bob's life forever Bob could be exposing himself to bloodborne pathogens bloodborne pathogens are bacteria and viruses that live in blood and other body fluids you can't see them, but they can cause devastating diseases like hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and HIV. Diseases that can make you very sick, or worse. Tens of thousands of new hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and HIV cases are reported every year. And a significant number of them happen after an exposure incident in the workplace. It's frightening, but true. Any time or anywhere you come in contact with someone else's blood or body fluids, you're at risk of a potential exposure. Bloodborne pathogens can have long-term serious health effects for anyone. It's important to protect ourselves against pathogens in the workplace because many of the diseases can cause serious consequences with our health. Example, you can have liver damage that can lead to eventually death. We need to be concerned because there's diseases that one employee can give to another employee and that's a huge liability for a company or an employee's health. To make matters worse, if you're infected with a bloodborne pathogen, you're the one whose blood and body fluids other people have to worry about. And that puts your family, your friends, and your entire quality of life in jeopardy. Bob is especially concerned here because he caused the accident that hurt his coworker. Let's call her Cindy. His first instinct, and rightfully so, is to help her. But if Bob has any open sores on his hands, even something as small as a hangnail or a paper cut, and if Cindy's a bloodborne pathogen carrier, he could get the infection too. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, calls body fluids that aren't blood other potentially infectious materials, or OPIM. OPIM includes the body fluids we've come to associate with bloodborne pathogens, like semen and vaginal fluids. But contrary to what some people think, sexual intercourse isn't the only way you can be exposed to body fluids that may be contaminated with bloodborne pathogens. Saliva, sweat, or vomit that's visibly contaminated with blood are also considered potentially infectious. <laughs> 